Some nodes in Nuke, such as the particle emitter or your favorite camera shake gizmo, have a random seed knob. This allows you to create different variations of setups using the same parameters on a given node. When these setups are used throughout a sequence, we often want to change up the random seed value so every shot matches an approved look, but doesn't behave in exactly the same way. When setting up a sequence template, you could expression link all random seed knobs to a no-op based control panel, but there is a better, much more automated way to get a random value by default. An individual shot in a sequence already has a unique number associated with it, its name. This is a perfect default value for a random seed. In this example, I've shot 120 and 140 from the ABC sequence. We're able to write some TCL to isolate the shot's number from the read nodes file knob. And to demonstrate, I'm going to use this text node here to print the progress of how we break down this file name. The first thing we'll utilize is top node. Top node is an inbuilt TCL function that crawls up your B pipe until it reaches the first node in the tree. This should always be a read node. Typing top node within square brackets in the text field returns a gibberish node index number that isn't useful to us yet. So let's keep going. To return the file path, we can use value.file. Each time we wrap some text in a pair of square brackets, we're asking Nuke to evaluate a new bit of TCL code. So here, we're evaluating which node equates to top node, and then we're finding the value of its file knob. As you can see, it's returned the full file path. Another useful TCL function is base name, and we can use it to only return the file name from a given file path. So let's try it. We're getting close. Now, how do we predictably return just the shot number from the file path? First, we can split this string into a list of values based on a defined set of characters. This probably sounds super confusing right off the bat, but I promise it's not once you get the hang of how it works. So now that we've written our split function, we have to tell it which character in this string to use to split. And of course, in between our show, our sequence, and our shot, we have these underscores separating it. So right before this last bracket, I can add an underscore. And you'll notice that the underscores disappear and are replaced by spaces. This means it's working. Now, if we want to only view each item in the list, we can use the list index TCL function or lindex. So let's do another open square bracket and type lindex the space and we'll close it off here. And again, initially nothing happens. In most programming languages, list indexes start at zero. So zero would return SHO. Then if we go up the list to ABC, if we go one, and if we go two, we're gonna get the shot name, but we're also getting the frame number and the file extension. TCL's split function allows us to use more than one character to split the string. So right after the underscore, we can also add a period. And just like that, our expression has worked. To better explain what's happening here, I'm temporarily going to remove this list index number. So before we were splitting only by the two underscores between the show name, the sequence name, and the shot name. Now that we've added a period in, you can see they're removed and there's spaces. And instead of having three list items, we now have five. So if we wanted to return 1001 now, we could use three, or if we wanted to return the file extension, we could use four. But in this case, obviously we only want this number in the shot name to use as our random seed value. So we'll keep it at two. Now that we've figured out the expression needed, I'll add it to the random seed of my camera shake gizmo. So we'll copy this entire expression. I'm going to create my camera shake and I'll plug it into the shot here. So under jitter, I can right click on the seed knob and add an expression and I'll paste that in here. And as you can see, it successfully returns 120. 
Similarly here, I'm just going to hit the equals key and in the float. And as we copy paste the camera shake gizmo to the next shot, you'll see that the seed value updates. Notice that as I add more nodes in between the camera shake with our expression and the read node, this value stays the same. And that is the power of top node. Although one gotcha is if you use a switch or a dissolve node. No matter the value or if the node is disabled, top node will only crawl up the zero pipe. If your read node is in input one, you can see that our expression fails. In cases where this is an issue, we're able to use TCL to get the shot number from our nuke script's file name. To do this, we can replace value.topnode file with value.rootname. As you can see, using TCL is a great predictable way of automatically updating the random seed knob on any node when setting up a template for your team.